My name is Francis Fulion. I'm a New Testament scholar at the Northwest University in the Unit for Reformational Studies. My focus is on the Synoptic Gospels. And I'm Albert Kutsia, also at the Northwest University and also at the Unit for Reformational Theology. Uh, I'm Francis' counterpart and Old Testament scholar, and my research interests is the Book of Deuteronomy, uh, the Book of Hebrews, and also hermeneutics. Now, this second volume, A Biblical Theology of Life in the New Testament, deals with the concept of life in the respective books and corpora of the New Testament. The same introductory matters as in the video of Volume 5, A Biblical Theology of Life in the Old Testament, applies. This book has 11 chapters. The various chapters follow the traditional canonical order of the New Testament books. Three chapters are devoted to the Gospels and Acts. These chapters cover the concept of life in the Synoptic Gospels, the Gospel of John and Acts. Because of space restrictions, as well as discussions on the authorship of the Johannine letters, the Gospel of John and Johannine letters are grouped together. The chapter on life in the Synoptic Gospels is written by myself. The chapter on life in the Gospel of John and Johannine letters is written by Yuri Jordan. And the chapters on life in Acts is written by Nina Muller von Felden. Three chapters are devoted to investigating the concept of life in the Pauline letters. One chapter, chapter is on life and what some scholars would refer to as the undisputed Pauline letters. This chapter is written by Philip de Toy. One chapter is on life and what some call the disputed Pauline letters, written by Elmer Cornelius. And the final chapter in this section is on the pastoral letters written by Aldred Genade. The next three chapters cover the general epistles. Gert Stein wrote the chapter on life in Hebrews, while Bruce Patton wrote the chapter on life in James. The short letter of Jude is grouped together with the first and second Peter because of the similarities between Jude and second Peter. This chapter was written by Henny Goede. The penultimate chapter investigates the concept of life in the book of Revelation and was written by the late Jan Durant. The volume concludes with a summative theological perspective of the development of the concept of life throughout the Old and the New Testament and is in our view one of the greatest contributions of this book. After we finished this project, we reflected on how this concept of life and its implications will have a bearing on the church and academia, on life in general. And we would like to give you some overview of the implications of these findings. We conclude then by giving you an overview of how this is a major concept in scripture, but also the implications of the concept of life for academia and for the church. Starting with the implications of this for academia, first and foremost, theology should recognize that life is a major theme in scripture. It can even be considered to be a more comprehensive theme than the themes of covenant, communion and kingdom, themes that are traditionally viewed as major biblical theology themes. As such, the biblical concept of life should enjoy more attention in all the New Testament studies, as well as in systematic theology, ethics, pastoral studies and missiology. A balanced view of life in scripture as a whole can greatly contribute to the advancement of the research of these disciplines. Secondly, the popular view that there is an apparent emphasis shift between the Old and New Testament in terms of physical versus spiritual life calls for more nuanced investigation and formulation. While this study found that the New Testament indeed introduces and emphasizes eternal or eschatological life, there is a greater degree of continuity between life in the Old and the New Testament than meets the eye. The implications of this biblical theology investigation of the concept of life in scripture for church are manifold and can be expressed in a variety of ways, taking reformed theology in Africa as our departure point. The implications of this study for the church can be captured with the aid of the following mnemonic device. With regard to comprehension, the church 
should comprehend two things even better, namely who God is and what he does and what life really is. God is the eternal living God, the origin and owner of all life. The son gave his life as ransom for our sins so that we can have eternal life. The Holy Spirit binds us to Christ and regenerates us. Life is much more than merely physical existence. To truly live in the biblical sense is to live a fulfilled life, which is a life lived in relationship with God based on his revealed will in scripture. Such a life strives for sanctification by fighting against sin, conforming to the image of the Son, and seeking the kingdom of God. The church can be comforted by the fact that God is the sustainer of life and has complete control over life and death. As a living God, he can do what no other God can do. This is a major comfort in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. The church can also be comforted with the hope of eternal life, knowing that God is en route with his church to the new heaven and new earth. Based on what God is and what he does, as well as the comfort he provides based on the being and work, the church should respond with reverent awe, praise, worship, and obedience. The biblical concept of life also calls the church to change and to change in a number of ways, addressing a couple of issues, amongst others, individualism. That human life is not meant to be lived in a self-centered, individualistic way. In the biblical view, we are to live a life that is for the benefit of our fellow human beings. We should also change as regards to injustices. The biblical view of life condemns a plethora of injustices, including racism, sexism, ageism, and all forms of discrimination. Striving for this change is especially important in the South African context, which is historically known for various injustices. It also calls us to change with regard to ecology. Since life with all its bi uh, biological diversity was created by God, and since all of creation is valuable in his eyes, creation should be protected and respected. And finally, the so-called decomity, where there's a sharp distinction between physical and spiritual life in human beings, well, scripture makes no such sharp distinction. All life comes from God and should be lived to his glory. And this message should be communicated. The church can proclaim the biblical view of, uh, of life anew, namely what, it, namely what it means to live in the biblical sense of the word and how this life was made possible by Christ.